Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, we are here at the Sirewall course. There is people everywhere and we're getting lots of stuff done. So hopefully y'all get a chance to come out and see the people who helped build our walls. Come check it out. Well, there you go, yeah, just like there. that. <laughs> and then the back, they're like, yeah, perfect. You, you could see it and I was like, yeah. what the heck's not working in my brain here? Okay, so you're on this panel here? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Now, how's it flushing up? That looks good. Okay, now we can screw it. To any of you guys that didn't do materials, he's going to do materials over there and want you guys to trade places. Yeah, so. let's trade. We'll get you some different people too. working oh, on the uh, board. Yeah. Yeah. Wrap us up. Do a different mix design, right? And we go out to quarries uh, in the local area, you know, 50 mile radius or so, something like that. And um, we'll, we look for, you know, we talk to geotechs and other professionals in the area first about where the strong materials are in the area, that sort of stuff. We, we want to find out if there's contaminants in the area, uh, all those sorts of things. And when we go out to quarries, you know, they got masses and masses of piles of material everywhere, that sort of stuff. Uh, we, what we're looking for primarily is unwashed materials. Uh, angular material in the rock. So you can see this is like a crushed stone, right? And then also you want to see if you can break a piece. Like if it's break, if I can break it with my hands, it's no good to us. It's going to get crushed by the, by the rammer. So it's not going to stay as one particle. But unwashed. <clears throat> unwashed materials is primarily what we use because you see all the little stuff, you know, the, all the little all stuff. That, yeah, that gets left on my hand after I played with that material. You can see the white stuff. Yeah. All that's going to fill gaps for us when we're compacting uh, and, and it takes the place of some of the Portland that we don't use um, to, to fill those gaps. We want stuff that's going to fill gaps and that's why we use the Poslands too. Is to, a lot of it's just to fill the really fine gaps and give us a stronger and stronger mix. Okay, so the, if it's already in there, then brilliant, you know. Uh, so we're looking for angular material, and then we want to see, we want to get as big a rock size as we can, ideally, really? um, because you know a rock like that is stronger than five of these rocks glued together, right? So the the more of that you can have in there, the better. But obviously, we need it to work and to be able to fill all the gaps around this. So we need enough material. It's usually a very good mix between something about that size. It's like three quarters or, you know, close to an inch down to dust that we're putting in our mix. We usually go out to a quarry and get 15 or 20 different materials, not all from one quarry. We'll go to five different quarries. We only pick the materials that make sense to us. We, you know, they'll often have, you know, washed materials or bigger stuff or stuff that just doesn't make sense to us that we, we don't bother even picking up. We can tell what it is we, by just looking at it. Um, and uh you know we pick those up we sieve all of them by hand um we've got in one of the modules that showed you the sieve sizes that we use um so if you go back and look at that i can give them to you but it, it's all in there um and uh so we sieve all of that by hand we put all that data into our computer program it tells us what's going to match up well and gives us a, a finest modulus number and a couple of other numbers and a graph and all sorts of things that we look at you know just and just from experience from we can put together an aggregate in the sand usually that we know is going to bind well and going to give us a good combination so we mix that in the computer program and it tells us what we're looking for and we're looking for certain numbers and things um, <clears throat> to give it to give us the right mix that we know is going to be strong or we you know 99% is going to be strong and then we go and take that mix or several of them usually two or three in an area and we build test cylinders we take them out to a, a lab and I'll tell you I'll show you how we build test cylinders in a minute but we take them out to a lab and they crush them for strength and prove that we were right about that or not you know we want to make sure we hit 3000 or you know like in New York it was 6200 psi we had to hit and we hit 8000 uh, over there you know so uh, and that took two mix design trips. We did one and got the base mix, and then we started adding poslands and trying different things and and whatever to get this. The, on the second mix design trip, we got what we needed, uh, and it hit 8,000 psi. And all three, we had three mixes we were testing, and all three of them hit over 6,200. Um, one was using the glass poslan uh, that we get locally there in New York, and um, that's the one we ended up using was that mix in their walls. Uh, we've also tried uh, recycled concrete, you know, crushed recycled concrete, and we'd love to use that, and, and it works. 
except that it's usually contaminated with plastic and junk in there. So you end up with a piece of blue plastic on the side of your wall, you know, and it just doesn't look great. Well, That's recycled concrete. Recycled concrete works. Um, you know, it's, we got to test it just like everything else, but they crush recycled concrete down to, you know, stuff like this and, and it works. The architects but, in North Carolina call, call it urbanite. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, you know, you can use a variety of products, but usually can, we don't, we normally stay away from crushed concrete because it's got contaminants in it. Um, it's got plastic, it's got other junk in it normally that we don't want in our wall. So there's that sort of stuff, right? So we look at that stuff. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the sand pile for a sec. Product, some of the times the quarries have reject products that we use that they love to get rid of. And you can normally get it basically free, you know, just pay delivery charges and that's it, it's yours, which is great if we can do that. Um, one thing to look at though is here, you see how this is sort of sitting up on its own pretty vertically, straight up and down. It's already doing it for, we don't have to do much to that too. Mm. It's less work for us to make it compact. It's compacting on its own. It's building walls by itself to some degree, right? So why not go with nature and, and with what works already and just add to that a little bit, you know? And that, that, can, that can make our life a lot easier. So when we go into quarries, we look for stuff, for piles that are sitting up like this. You know, sometimes you'll see huge sheer walls of these things sitting up like, and it's like, I wanna go and look at that material, you know? And so, you know, the, and you can, you know, I can barely sort of get my fingers into that. It's compacted all on its own, right? It's, it's tough, you know? The kids have actually made tunnels that's horizontally right. yeah oh, wow. and it will stay open stay for a good long right, while for a long i mean time. yeah that's right huh. wow. same I sort of thing the like sand is normally really dirty or, or unwashed that we use okay and it's got a lot of different particle sizes you can see the biggest stuff <coughs> with the rain it's washed off the fines you know so you can see the biggest stuff here on the surface but if you go down a bit you're going to find you know what's a consistent material and uh and once we sieve that we dry it and we sieve it you'll find you know five different particle sizes in there we often go to our kids schools you know with the sieve set and have them sieve their sand pit and mm. they're always shocked about there's like five or six <coughs> different particle sizes just in their sand pit for to them it just looks Elijah. like sand right but it's starting to be no. like you know how eskimos know snow you know they they know there's like seven or nine or 30 different types of snow and to us it just looks like snow right i mean but eskimos can see all sorts of different types of snow compared to you and me or most of us i don't know maybe some of you guys are part eskimo i don't know but you know like there's people who have you know certain talents in looking for that stuff and we've got the same thing with these materials okay um so we get you know usually it's a sand and an aggregate some form of that uh that goes into our mix uh and then we do different ratios sometimes it's three to one like here Sometimes it's two to two, sometimes it's, you know, five to three, you know, whatever it is, it's, we, it's, we can do a bunch of different things with our computer program to test different ways to blend material. Uh, and then we, like I said, we sieve them, we, we sieve them, do that analysis, build test cylinders. We get uh, PVC, six inch PVC and 14 inch lengths and schedule 20 is good enough, but it's very hard to find these days. You normally have to go to schedule 40 and schedule 10 won't hold up okay so go to schedule 40 and 14 inches uh, you're going to make a 12 inch cylinder but you need a bit of room to ram in the top so you give a 14 inch you tape the bottom of that cylinder we're going to put it in a bucket like this first with nothing in it and then uh, we pour in you know waste material sand or whatever around the sides and you know sort of most of the way up that so we've got, you know, it holds it for us. And then we pour it, you know, we mix our stuff on a piece of ply with shovels, you know, in the right proportions, cement and everything, and, and put half of the cylinder in, ram it down. When you're ramming a cylinder, you gotta ram around the edges, don't ram in the middle. So if you ram in the middle, it just pushes up around the sides and won't give you good compaction, right? So you ram around in a, in a spiral motion or a circular motion. You Are you ram ramming with pneumatic rammer or just hand <clears throat> Pneumatic rammer. rammer? You could by hand, but you know, if you're going to ram your wall with a pneumatic, you need to ram your cylinder with a pneumatic, ideally. Um, you, you put in about half, so about seven inches, ram that down, put in almost the way to the top, ram that down, and then, you know, one more. So we usually do three lifts, 
Then we tape the top, take it out of that bucket, put it over to the side and let it cure and, until we take it to the lab, which can be as early as five minutes later or, or up to seven days later. Um, we got to baby them when they're brand new like that. You, you know, we literally pack them into a car with packing material all around them and put them in the back of a truck or whatever. Don't just throw them on a pallet and throw them in the back of your truck. They're going to get bounced around. I mean, the wall, a freshly made wall is not getting bounced around. So you've got to replicate what you're doing to your walls to get a true test, right? So they're going to trim both ends of that rammed earth. They're going to cap it with a, they cap it with a sulfur based product. I don't know what it is, but it's sulfur. And then they put in a big machine, crushes them. And they measure how much, how many PSI it took to, to crush that thing. And that's how they can tell us what PSI. And then they regularly. do it again in 24 days or whatever. Uh, yeah, so 27 days and 28 days. 28. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're at about sort of 65, 70% at seven days and about, you know, 95 plus at, at 28 days. Yeah. So usually after the 28 day cure, you guys have already met your stat. Yeah, we're done. Often it'll be at seven days. Right. Yeah. Which is great. You know, that's, that's a good sign. We want, that's why we do the seven day. So we do six of each, three at seven days and three at 28 days. And that's to get an average. Yeah. So we crush yeah, three and we, you know, we add all those numbers yeah. together and divide by three. And that's You're not right. putting rebar in there? No, no rebar in there. Okay, let me sweep it up first. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Mainly, uh, don't worry too much about the middle. It's mostly the sides. Yeah. I mean, really, you want it to be as clean as possible, but at this point, it's, it's not going to hurt it. You're never going to see that. Fresh champers, look at those. Ooh, do we have new ones? Yeah, there's new ones. We cut them a while ago and never used them. Oh, actually, Luke, let's it's just the ladders. Oh. You're good. let's cut two of those to four foot because we'll do. Oh, I guess we can do eight foot all the way up. Yeah, I just there's gonna be a lot of new people moving in and out, and they're gonna rip the champers off, and then we'll be putting in four foots anyway. Do you just finish nail or do you run a wood screw? No, finish nail. Finish nail? Yeah, the wood screws will, will leave the head yep. and the finish nail where we'll... Uh... So the the right biggest the biggest kicker is with the champers is only chamfer into one of the forms. Doesn't matter which one, just pick one. Cause then <laughs> when you go to pull them, you'll be yanking on the form to get it out. Cause those finish nails hold a lot stronger than you think. <laughs> The other thing is you would al almost always rather have an indent into your form as opposed to something yeah. sticking out of your form. Yeah, so occasionally perfect. those finish nails won't go all the way in. And I usually, when I'm being particular, go and pound them <laughs> in because otherwise you have a hole in your wall as opposed to something sticking off that you can easily rub off. Like where do you butt the walls together? Uh -huh. like um, you know, your joint, you run chamfers on both sides. I mean, so, like so do... we've done it both ways mm -hmm. and we've done it one way. So we've done a chamfer on one and done a flat on the other. So I can show you all three yeah. and you can choose what you want to do. I'm going to tell you right now though, the chamfer, uh, it hides the push out. Cause when you butt two walls together, you're never going to be able to get that form perfectly against, oh, uh, perfectly against the wall. And so actually that crack that you see in the big, big wall, mm -hmm. the, the crack up the middle, yep. that was, we didn't chamfer both. We just tried it flat to see what it would look like. That's what it ends up looking yeah. like. It ends up looking like a real big vertical cold joint, which I personally like. Kendall said she doesn't care for as much. Okay. So we're gonna chamfer all of, we're gonna double chamfer all of them from now on. We, there's another one on the backside where we double chamfered them and you'll, you'll see the difference. Yep. Yeah, the double chamfer does look nicer. I just like the more like rustic look. Yeah. And so, it but that. the missus wins. So. <laughs> How are we doing? We're doing good. We're just going to drop lunch this in. Is, lunch is a little bit delayed. Oh, okay. So it'll be probably half an hour late or something like that. Okay, so. perfect. Yeah. Unacceptable. I know. No, so what we'll do, uh, we're going to drop this in. Yeah. Put it, and then I think what we'll do is maybe bring everyone over for a form inspection. Yep just to show what we do to walk yep, through it. That's Kendall can lead the form inspections talk because she's my form inspector. There you go, that's great, I love it. It's been a while. I know, do you have your checklist? I do. <laughs> pretty close, pretty, pretty close. Oh, so that. Step on it, problem solved. There we go. There we go, I think so. It helps to have a fat butt. 
Uh, um, so we get a hammer, uh, we need a hammer and a square. Because what we'll do is we'll square these two up. And this is where you're going to really need that. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't like this is where you're really going to want that um, back the ratchet. And if anything, go like a sixteenth bigger so that way we can get the next form in. So just to give it a little more room. Give it just a, just a hair more room. Right Actually, do we have the yeah the big framing square? I'd rather have that. Yeah, just because. So, we'll come to our line. There we go. And then we're literally just checking square. Square-ish. <laughs> this is the wall that we will see. So then we need, uh, let's go ahead and drive our um, tap cons in, since we got this squared, and then we'll level it, screw it in, and be done so. Send it. <laughs> All right, and let's do this side, and then we can just run them. Because we're going into wood, you definitely do them every foot. <laughs> On this one. You want to try to go steal the steel if we can? Uh, no, because what will happen is, what we found is, if you're this far out, this will actually flex. And so it'll push out. So you want to as close to that wood as possible. But, you know, I like using wireless. Send it. Basically, it's a block that uh, has ports through it. Oh, okay. Because the body of this here rammer has ports running through the walls for Makes sense. exhaust and compression and various whatnots. Um, and in the top side is a little reed valve. Awesome. So if you're familiar with like two stroke, uh, two stroke engines that've got a reed valve, this isn't really like that, but you know, reed. But it's still a reed valve. valve. Yeah. So. <laughs> You can drop that out, clean it, uh, put a little little drop of oil on there so it's moving around freely. So one of our rammers was, has been acting up for a little while. And we've just kind of been fighting it. Um, wasn't until until today that I looked really closely at the reed valve and there was something funky about it. There's a chunk of it missing. Yeah, it's in three pieces. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> That kind of explains why. That's that probably was the first time you one that issue. Move. Yeah, it's the first time I saw that. All right. Day two is done at the Sirewall course. Hopefully you saw something you enjoyed. We are having a blast doing this. It's much easier to watch people work as it turns out, but uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. So thanks for joining our adventure.